I think every industry, the world we live in now, is really tied to data and AI. It, it, it's no longer these nice things to have. And so the army and a lot of others need to be tied to skills that not everyone needs to be a data scientist, but can everybody harness the power of data and AI to improve their lives and improve their skills. And so when you think about military, can we empower soldiers, the intel and all that to look at data more effectively to make smarter decisions? In healthcare, can we use data to empower a person to find trends and patterns that maybe help cure diseases? And so everywhere we look, people should be not worried about these things per se, but how can we skill them so that they're confident in using it without having to become super nerdy. I'm Jordan Morrow. I am the Chief Nerd Officer is the nickname I like. I have another nickname, the Godfather of Data Literacy. I didn't give myself that nickname. I'm not sure what I think about it. I'm a dad, I'm a husband. Uh, those are the best things. I was up at West Point at the Military Academy where the Army does great work in data literacy. I was supposed to fly home today, but then I was asked, can I be on a panel, an AI panel today? So that's, that's what brought us here today. I think people sell their gut feel and intuition short. Well, guess where gut feel and intuition come from? personal data points or personal data ideas. We just don't reference it as a personal data point. An example I've used is I, last year in 2023, I went and visited Scotland uh, and it was Scottish Fire and Rescue that brought me out there. And one example I like to use is imagine you're a firefighter and you hear a popping noise and your gut tells you eight out of 10 times, that means the floor is gonna collapse so you get out. That popping noise, that gut feel, is a data point, you just don't think of it that way. I like to say people are more data literate than they realize. Artificial intelligence is trying to copy or be able to do what a human does. That's how I would, very simple. It is a technology that tries to mirror our capabilities. We hear about hallucination and I find hallucination to be funny. Do humans lie with data? Of course they do. Do humans misuse data? Of course they do. Does AI hallucinate with data? Of course it does. We are so easy to understand that humans do it, but when AI does it, oh, the AI's bad, it hallucinated. Did you not read what so-and-so just said and how much of a hallucination that is? So, but there are issues, just like a human, right? This ability to question ourselves, it is hard and it is not comfortable. So this is where I think an AI agent might be super, super powerful in that you don't have to do what it says but at least it's spurring our thought process a little bit. Even if, let's say, we're not to the, we never want to do an ultra marathon, but maybe we're at the 5K and our thought process is telling us to go to a 10K. That could be just enough step that you ask one extra question every time you read some data point. Um, that emotion and reaction are not there. It's intelligence and proactive. And I think that's really important with all the technology going on around us. I like that guardian angel idea that this AI is sitting there to help you become better. And whether that better means, hey, do you really need to eat another cookie, Jordan? I love my sweets. Do I need more New York pizza? In reality, hey, you're at this level. Do you really need it? But here's where the human element kicks in. The human element needs to be a part and says, you know what? I don't eat like this all the time. I work out pretty religiously. I can have a night. I'm with my daughter. Let's go get some New York pizza. Okay, AI agent, maybe then it takes that as new learning to say, he's away from home, let's look at his workouts of the past two weeks, thumbs up, I don't need to prod him that way anymore. I would describe my relationship with technology as I've like always been surrounded by it. I was born in like 2007, like right when the iPhone came out and so it became very popularized by the time I could remember and I've always remembered using like computers and stuff at school but I do remember a key shift in my learning and the, the beginning of junior high from elementary school, I used like almost all paper assignments. And then once I got to junior high, everything was mostly online. And so it was really key shift from being like, oh, I'm surrounded by technology as now I'm like using all this technology I was surrounded by. Our teacher developed this AI platform where you would input certain parts of your essay and it wouldn't rewrite it for you, but it would tell you how to improve it in order to get points on the AP test. From my experience with Gen Z and AI is that everyone is like very open to the idea of AI, 
but the majority of people don't know how to use it properly. Like They don't know how to phrase questions or how to organize their thoughts so that AI understands how to respond in a way that will be helpful. I have what I call the three C's of data literacy. Mm -hmm. Curiosity, creativity, and critical thinking. Curiosity might be the most important one. Helping people understand that questioning things is a very, very good tool. I said this at the event we were at earlier today here in New York. Children are the best data literacy detectives. For whatever reason, when we become adults, it's, I don't know if it's educated out of us, if it's we get caught up in our career, whatever reason, the questions go away. I really want to bring that back. And that is my first C of data literacy, essentially, is curiosity. Just ask a lot of questions.